Do you remember the last vacation you took at a very popular tourism destination? Do you know where you went? Where did you hear about this place? Did you see it on someone's Facebook page or did you come across it in the movies? And when you went there, did you actually go to just the tourism spots or did you go beyond? Did you see what was beyond those tourism spots? Did you talk to your cab driver? Did you go into a little village? Did you sit and eat a meal with a local villager? Ten years ago, I went on a vacation to just a very popular tourism destination in India, a place called Ladakh. Ladakh is a high altitude mountainous region in the Himalayan territory of India. And 10 years ago, it wasn't as popular as it was today, as it is today. I went on a solo trek, little realizing anything about the region. I had no idea. On my bucket list was just the two or three treks that I wanted to do. Being the overconfident trekker that I was, I didn't acclimatize as well and I felt extremely ill. Here's the part that was uh, different. I fell ill in a little village, which was part of my trek, which had exactly one family in that. Can you imagine a village with exactly one family? The nearest other village was about four hour walk away. So here I am cut off all by myself in a village with just one family. There are no stores, there are no hospitals, there's no healthcare centers, there is nothing. My phone doesn't work. The village doesn't have electricity. I don't know anyone. All I see is a family of three, two goats and a cow and a yak, I think, a zoo. This was my introduction to Ladakh. Luckily for me, and I say luckily, is despite my illness, I stopped to breathe in the beauty of Ladakh and I stopped to look and understand how is it that there is a remote village so far away from a roadhead and that's something I know so little about. Being an Indian, I had no idea there were villages like this. Here is the beauty of this village and this region. On that same trek, I came across a school. The school had five children. Not in a classroom, mind you, in the entire school. It had five children and two teachers, of which one of the teachers had actually was on his way back to the main town of Leh to buy midday meal supplies. The school was being reconstructed and painted for just these five children. As most government schools are go, this it had a broken blackboard. It had just two very shabby looking rooms, bare floors. And Ladakh, mind you, goes down to temperatures, very, very low temperatures. So let me give you a little bit more about Ladakh. Ladakh, like I said, is a high altitude regions, region. People live in altitudes upwards of 9,000 feet. Let me give you something to compare it with. Delhi, Gurgaon, where I'm talking from right now is approximately 600 feet. So you're at an altitude. Temperatures go down to minus 50 degrees in the winters. The Ras of the Kargil region of Ladakh is arguably, I think, the second most coldest region in the entire planet. From the world over, hundreds and thousands of tourists come over to Ladakh every year. In fact, the number of tourists who come here are more than the local population. Every year, there's about 300 to 400,000 tourists who visit. Do you know where they visit? They visit this beautiful lake called the Pangong Lake, which most of you would have seen in the movies or in selfies and pictures. But here's a little fact I bet you didn't know. Just beyond that beautiful Pangong Lake are few tiny little settlements, hamlets, which have just a handful of homes. There is a little village there which has five children in its school. There's another one which is 30. There is yet another one with 17 children in the school. I bet you didn't know that. Ladakh is home to the highest motorable road. People from the world over come there to click selfies. But beyond that motorable road, a few hundred, a few ta hamlets, almost 100 hamlets that are there, which border our two bordering neighbors, China and Pakistan. It is home to the famous Chadar Trek, which uh, trekkers come in from all over to come and visit. But did you know this part? It's a trek for many for the outsiders, but for the Dakis, it's a lifeline. That's the only way they travel to reach their remote villages in winter when the mountain passes are covered in snow. You and me enjoy winter out here when we are snuggled up in our blankets and things come into our homes. Many Ladakhis are stuck in their villages and do not come out for a few months of a year because in the winters, the roads are shut. There is, this is the other Ladakh that most of you don't see. I was there for 21 days 
and on, during my solo trek and the reality of Ladakh hit me. What hit me was more was my sense of shame that I knew so little about a part of my own country. A background about me, I come from a corporate background. I'm an um, information technology professional. I've worked for many years in the US, came back, quit to work with children. I was at the point of that point of time in my life, I was teaching in a very affluent private school here in Gurgaon. The reality of the private school and the facilities that my own children have coming across a school with three children and five children blew my mind. I came back completely fired up with a passion of wanting to do something. I had found my life's purpose. But passion is one thing. Converting it into a vision and a goal is something entirely different. When I came back, the first thing I did was research to understand why do I know so little and what can I do to help? What is the reality? The one thing that really amazed me is Ladakh has 1,000 schools. 1,000 schools with an average school strength of barely 25 children. And education is today the single largest reason for them to migrate, that and job opportunities. There is nothing out there to hold them back in the villages barring a government school. And they sometimes young children as young as three or four years old go to the cities to study and stay alone in dormitories and hostels. Most of these villages don't have electricity. Most of them still do not have mobile connectivity, but the people want to stay there because that is their home. But their only aspiration is life, is better education for their children and jobs for their children. This Ladakh then became the one that I said, I want to change things. Or how can I be, how can I help? The one thing that bothered me was if I don't know anything about this Ladakh, if I knew so little, chances are no one else does either. So my first thought, about building this passion into a vision was how do I make people aware of the real Ladakh? How do I get people to go beyond the tourism reasons? So if I, the thought that helped me was if I were to put these villages and schools on the map, Google didn't have information then. Can I then ask you to go to Ladakh, go to the real villages and maybe contribute, take a box of crayons, take a football for a child, take some storybooks for them to read, conduct a reading workshop, so that's the first thing we did. I came back, fired up, and I quit my job and I started this organization called 17,000 Feet Foundation. As the name suggests, I said, I'm not going to limit myself to Ladakh. By the way, this is the story of the most of the Indian Himalayan region, which is another 10 states. We started 17,000 Feet Foundation along with my husband and a third founding member who's a Ladakhi with the simple reason, how do we get people to live better lives in their own villages? First thing we did, we mapped the entire region of Ladakh. We visited 1,000 schools. It was beautiful to see that every village had every single child who went to school. There was not one single child who was not going to school. And that's such a beautiful thing to see. For me, that made me want to do more for them. I said, how do I get these children to stay back and not travel outside so far away or migrate? Simple. I said, how can I work with the parents' perception that, look, your government school is good. There is a system at work. If every single hamlet, regardless of how small or big, has a school, it is a system that's trying to work. So the best way we can work is to support it rather than create something in parallel. So we set about beautifying the schools. First things. How do we make the schools look better, perform better, feel better? So we started painting the schools, we provided carpeting, we put up playgrounds, furniture, playgrounds. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to set up a playground in a remote village, which sometime could take me three days of a walk to reach? Villages have to come out in full force to help us. Not just this, have, do you know how difficult it is to set up a playground in an area which is mountainous, where you don't have any electricity? Villagers and our team members sit together and break stones with their bare hands. And this is the story of the Ladakh, which is driven by a sense of community, of togetherness that we started work in. We've set up playgrounds now in over 140 schools, and this year we'll be setting up 10 more. The playgrounds have attracted children to the school like anything. They want to come there. They come there before the teachers come in and they leave after the teachers leave. Parents are pulling their children out of other schools and saying, I want my child to be here because the school is looking beautiful. Furniture. Do you know children sit on the floor in minus 15 degrees centigrade? In Delhi and Gurgaon, which faces some sort of winters, we shut the schools down when it is 5 degrees. In Ladakh, 
Schools continue up until December when it is minus 15 degrees and they shut for three months after. But the children go to school. There are regions in Dras where the snow is at two feet, three feet, maybe even four feet high. Entire families move down for the winter. Children actually go to in different schools for six months and after the snow melts, which by the way could take about a month, after the snow melts, they come back to their villages. I have pictures and visuals of children studying on in schools where the snow has reached two feet, uh, two floors, two stories high. But they're studying and they love coming to school. This area, we said, how do we bring digital education? So that's another thing. Being a techie myself, a corporate techie, two years ago, we even did this for us. Reaching the last mile is not the problem. The problem is reaching the last mile with the best solution. That is what we wanted to do. We waited eight years to get the perfect solution. Today, we have also have a solution where all of our schools are digitized. They have solar electricity. They have a unique offline solution. Children are able to learn at home. And today during COVID, when the rest of the country, most of the remote areas, children are sitting at home. Our children have tablets in their hands, in their homes. We managed to do a whole lot. For us, what has kept us going is the spirit of the community and the sense of purpose that they have. We managed to reduce migration. Most of our children are back home now, sitting at home, going to the schools in their villages. And what keeps us going is the sense of purpose that they give us. For us, Ladakh has been a test bed. We call ourselves 17,000 feet foundation. And what we also do is we welcome people like you to come in and be a part of our program. So next time you go to Ladakh, don't just go as a tourist. You can go as a volunteer tourist. You can help us go to this remote village. But if you go to that remote village, then you can contribute to the income of that village. So next time you go anywhere, look beyond the tourism destination. Maybe, just maybe, your life's calling may just be beyond there. Thank you for listening. I welcome you all to Ladakh someday, the real Ladakh. So as the Ladakhis say, uh, Jule, Salaam Alaikum and Namaste.